let me show you how I made it. <laughs> and not forgetting the secret compartment behind. Now this whole build can be done in less than a full sheet of plywood. And because I planned the design in advance, I knew I could roughly cut it in three sections to get it home. Then I could rip all the components down with a circular saw or my saw horses. If you want to follow along, you can find my set of plans with an optimised cut list in a link below. But you can easily adapt them, for example if your dog doesn't eat tinned meat and just kibble. Then I started pre-drilling, gluing and screwing the two sides to the base. The idea is it's going to be on wheels so I can move it to any room that I want and to access the cans at the back. But before I added the middle divider, I thought let's add the can dividers now for better access. By the way, for those in the US, here in the UK, tin food tends to be about 400 grams, which a quick search converts to 14 ounces. Although I purposely gave mine a little bit of room because I don't like the idea of things being too tight. But bear in mind, the back of this is going to be the kibble. Then I did the same for some strips across the front edges. Those would keep them in, but there's a gap at the bottom and it'll allow me to rotate the tin so nothing ever goes off, which is probably unlikely with hands. It's all about the meat. Next, I cut some angled pieces to push the bottom cans out. These are just bevels from 38mm by 63mm CLS but I found that wasn't actually deep enough so instead I'd cut two bevels off to create a larger piece on the bandsaw. To keep the cans in place I put another bevel on a ripped piece of plywood and glued, screwed and nailed it on and it's that piece that completely keeps them in place. Okay so this is where I start to get very very obsessive. Now I could talk to death about all the tests and the theories that I worked out so I'm going to give you a very quick version of this although it does help to start it with cardboard. The blast gate idea was just two holes where I'd pull a piece of wood out, the holes would match, the kibble would fall through. But you've got very little control of how much food that goes through. But instead, I really wanted to challenge myself to design something that gave out portions. With one hole with a little container underneath, fills up with dog biscuits, then you can push it back and it empties in another hole. But I found this boxy shape didn't work at all. So what I did was, I drilled a hole with a hole saw, in one piece of wood which would be the pulley lever underneath the bottom shelf. Then I've got two side pieces with two runners where that piece will sit on top of and I can pull it back and forth. And that pulley lever, I'm screwing a box shape around the hole. That's the little container for the dog biscuits. If you want any more, you'll need to make it taller. And to stop me pulling it completely out, the back of the box bit is longer which will smack against the runners. So right now I've got my bottom shelf piece that goes inside the dog food dispenser. The side pieces are screwed to the shelf. I've pulled the mechanism out where the runners stop it completely coming out and I need to drill a hole through the shelf. So I drew in the circle but I found a smaller hole on the shelf part was less likely to create any jams when opening and closing it. So I'm drilling with a smaller hole saw here. So two of the holes are done. I need a third hole, so I'm screwing another piece on top, this is all upside down still, push the lever closed and clamped it so it didn't move, but because I've got a box inside here, I drilled an access hole so I could slot my router in and remove the excess with a flush trim router bit. And then I could screw the shelf into the frame, although later I felt this mechanism was in the way, eating straight out of his bowl, so I did raise it eventually. Now as part of the design process, if I hadn't have planned all of the moving parts first on SketchUp, I am sure I would have found it even more challenging. And that's why I'd like to thank Skillshare for sponsoring this project. I've been using their online learning community for the last month to navigate my way around SketchUp as a beginner. And there's loads of different classes for makers and creators to master, from woodworking, sewing, art like watercolours, lino printing, digital art, even interior design and everything in between. Another class I've been really enjoying lately is learning how to turn your own art design and print it to create your own illustrated textiles. And that's with UK teacher Ellie Shipman. And there's new premium classes being launched all the time. So if you're in the mood to learn some new skills too, then Skillshare are offering the first 1,000 people a free one month trial if you join by using my link in the description. And who knows what you can achieve. Another thing I was concerned about with it being a flat shelf, some of the dog biscuits would just get left in the corners. So I cut some beveled pieces and glued and screwed them to the sides so the kibble would naturally slope towards the hole. I also added another angled piece at the back centre and used that really as a frame to contour some lining around 
So again, no biscuits would be hiding in any crevices. I'm telling you what, this stapler is going in the bin. I absolutely hate it. I'm sure it only works 10% of the time. And of course, I had to change it all later. When it came to the lid, I screwed a small piece at the top back to hold an off-cut piano hinge and screwed it to the other piece. I might actually change this so it's not so on show. Anyway, let's skip forward to where I did change the height of the food dispenser, which meant more arguments with my stapler. And I realised I needed to create a V-shape at the back end of the top hole so any excess biscuits would get pushed against that and that drastically cut down any issues. Now to add a pulley. This was just a cheap handle from Tool Station, screwed onto a profiled piece of wood and I'd put some packers between that and the cover piece so I knew it'd never rub. And this was where it gets a little bit rude. <laughs> I also wanted to be able to see through the front cover. I used a flat wood drill bit to drill two holes and cut a slot out with my jigsaw. And I didn't like that it was slightly wonky, but this encouraged me to think actually, a dog bone shape would cover any sloppiness and be a lot more appropriate. Except this is totally not appropriate. I'm about to redeem myself. <laughs> oh, that's pretty. After a quick sand and go over it with a chamfer router bit, I screwed on some caster wheels with brakes to make it mobile. And then I could crack on with painting it. I wanted to use some black chalk paint and the only thing that I could find was blackboard paint. Although with it being toy safe, I assume it's also safe for dogs. The next thing I needed to do was drill a little hole underneath the dog bone so I could put a poking device in there to unsettle the biscuits because the fuller it is, the more likely they're just gonna sit there. Although later I realized that a bendy knitting needle was perfect for this with the larger head of the knitting needle on the inside. Now I know this was wasteful, but I drilled and screwed an entire A4 piece of Perspex inside. It was easier than cutting it up. To create compartments for dog treats, I used another hole saw and drilled one on either side. And those are positioned underneath those sloping pieces. Another thing I needed to sort was, because the shoot hole is right at the back and Hans's dog bowl is round, I had to get creative and recycle some old plastic containers. And I cut fan shapes out, fold them back and hot glued them around, but later also glued part of a milk bottle around there where the curved piece would shoot them straight in. Is it dindins, mate? So we can move this out. Which one do you want? Beef! You want beef? Okay, watch, watch. Oh, didn't I'd love to know what you think of it, and I hope I've inspired some of you to think creatively. And if you want to see more pet projects, I recommend meeting me over at my DIY dog bed with toy storage underneath. It's a very neat and functional space-saving hack.